you know, if you have somebody, say you have somebody who's A1C of eight, 20 pounds over and compared to an A1C of six and 20 pounds less, like I think their risk is much different, mm -hmm. right? And the point was that at the time, we weren't focused on getting the, the, the sugars down through dietary control. Mm -hmm. And neither were we focused on getting that weight down either. Nobody cared. We mm -hmm. were plying them with so much insulin that they couldn't lose weight, right? And I saw it day in, day out because I have, because I'm a kidney specialist, I see You would mostly, see the worst cases. Yeah, yeah, I see the worst cases and almost my whole practice is like, because it's that. It's that For because sure. it's just, at the same time, we had all these studies of bariatric surgery, which basically proved that it was a reversible condition, right? Because it's defined by that A1C greater than 6.5 on no medications, right? That's how you define type 2 diabetes. So when you change their diet, and this was a very drastic measure, of course, right? But that diabetes came down like within a month, like within weeks, those sugars came right down. That's what all the studies showed. Mm -hmm. So if it's reversible, why would you tell people it's irreversible, right? It's all. Well, I think due they were the talking diet. about the risk. The risk of what? The risk of Th that the r risk stays elevated. That you can't oh, really yeah, reverse the yeah. risk. I think that's the thought process. Okay, behind. but the diabetes itself is reversed. I would say it's right? controllable, but the risk is always ever present. Uh, well, according to current, like this is twenty mm -hmm. since twenty twenty three, it's considered in remission, mm -hmm. right? That's yeah. the term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and, but the and point also, is like, why pre diabetic range is so interesting? It, it's the the range that is considered the time where you can reverse it, yeah, and completely stop the progression into type two diabetes. But it, it can be re it can be reversed in that you can go from di diabetes into diabetes in remission to yes. pre diabetes and beyond because of these course. are all defined right by the A one C. And honestly, right? these will change as time <laughs> yeah, goes on as we yeah. get more data. So, it's but the point being that. Up until 2023, there the no nobody ever said that this was a reversible disease. Mm -hmm. It could not be reversed, which was crazy because it's like, yes, I can get that A1C down from eight down to five and a half. Bariatric surgery proved that, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and not over a short period of time, like really fast, right? Mm -hmm. Those those bariatric surgery trials, if you remember that before they lost a significant amount of weight their A1Cs came down to normal. It was like two weeks, right? Three weeks. And the sugars were completely normalized, right? So it's long before the rest of that weight loss took place. There was something happening there that, you know, and, and, and from 2010, 2012, when all these bariatric surgeries came out, that's 12 years before the American mm -hmm. Diabetes Association said, yes, it's reversible because it's really important to tell people that it's a reversible disease. Because if you tell people it's an irreversible disease, they'll be like, okay, I give yeah, up. Yeah, it's demotivating to hear exactly. that. You know, to me, it's like, you got to tell people the truth. For if sure. If it's reversible, and if it's largely a dietary mm -hmm. disease, then that should be the first message you give people. Mm -hmm. It's a dietary disease and it's reversible. Let me help you do that. Which is yeah. what they didn't say, right? And that's where I say, well, that's, that's really tough. Because I remember telling... Patients, look, this is a reversible disease. So, so just to finish, so, so what happened was I started to realize that weight loss was really important, which of course everybody agrees on. That's in that's actually in the standards mm -hmm. of care for 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 in, in the latest uh, sort of 2024 American Diabetes Association guidelines. Weight loss is actually quite critical. Mm -hmm. uh, but I realized that weight loss is really important, and that's where I became super, super, super interested in weight loss because mm -hmm. if you could get people to lose weight then you could reverse their type two diabetes, which means they never got diabetic kidney disease because they don't have diabetes, right? Or you'd reduce the risk at the very right. minimum. Yeah. So then I started talking to people about a couple of things. One is low, lowering their carbohydrates, right? When And again, it's not a new thing, like cutting carbohydrates is has been around a long time. And if you look at the American Diabetes Association nutrition guidelines, the scientific guidelines, they say there's actually the most data, this low carb diet has the most data of any diet for control of, of blood sugars. And that makes sense, right? Because if you eat white bread, you know that the blood sugar goes up. If you eat an egg, you know the blood sugar doesn't go up. So eat less of the white bread and eat more of the egg. That's sort of logical, right? And then I started talking to them about intermittent fasting. So this mm -hmm. is in 2010, 2011. And at the time, <laughs> again, you have to remember that everybody thought it was the dumbest thing they'd ever heard. Intermittent fasting, not eating was known to kill people, right? Uh, there was so much bias against that. 
And I said, well, let me look at the data here. What's so bad about it, really? What happens to your body when you fast? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, from if you're diabetic, if you're overweight, if your blood glucose is high, nothing bad happens. Remember that your body has the ability to store calories. It stores calories, which is a form of food energy in the form of glucose, right? You can store glycogen, which is a chains of glucose, and you can store body fat. When you don't eat, your body is going to start burning the glucose or start burning the body fat. And you have too much of both. Therefore, if you fast, that's all that's going to happen. And it's a completely natural process. It happens in everybody. Uh, you know, back in caveman days, people were fasting all the time, whether it's voluntarily or involuntarily. It's the very reason you have body fat. It's not there for looks. It's there for you to use when you don't eat. And as a doctor, I had been prescribing fasting to patients. Pre-op, you have to fast. Colonoscopy, you have to fast. Post-op, you have to fast. Treatment of pancreatitis, you have to fast. For fasting, blood glucose, you have to fast. So it's like, okay, if I'm telling people they should fast for all these reasons, then why can't they do it from a therapeutic standpoint? It doesn't make any sense, right? So I told them, you should fast. And I, I started them on a fasting regimen and crazy, it was crazy. What I regimen had, did you choose? I used a 24 hour fast uh, three times a week for my patients. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was just because, you know, at least you're eating once a day and they could take their medications if they had pills and stuff. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too much and it wasn't too little for like, I wanted to go gently. Got it. Um, and so I had this one patient, which I wrote, in, 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 uh, wrote up as a case report. Uh, I had been treating him for like 10 years. He was on 120 units of insulin and he was very dedicated, wrote down everything, wanted to know everything. So I told him, you should try this, right? And keep track. Within a month, he came off all his insulin, all of his blood pressure, uh, all of his blood sugar pills and his A1C went down to like 5.9. I'm like, holy crap, in a month. And then I had three of these cases <laughs> in the first six months. I had three cases just like that. And I thought to myself, holy crap, I've, I've actually been doing all my patients a huge disservice. I've been treating them for the last eight, nine, 10 years as a, di as a type two diabetic that had it for the rest of their life and they would inevitably go on to nephropathy when that type two diabetes was completely reversible. You gotta recognize that we call it diabetic nephropathy. It's like, if you don't have diabetes, then you're going to have less chance of getting the diabetic nephropathy. It happens, but it's it's, sure. it's unusual. So it's like, okay, that's crazy. All because I didn't focus on the right thing. And that's where I started really to think about uh, both weight loss and uh, fasting as a therapeutic tool.